All right, everybody, today it is swim and dive at a local high school facilities. You can see it's nice and bright and sunny. It's about 100 degrees out, so I'm gonna be doing some sweating. Uh, water's really beautiful, and a bright sunny day, which makes for some great photos. So come along with me and I'll show you how I like to shoot swim and dive. All right, before we head to the pool, why don't we talk about everybody's favorite subject, which is gear. Okay, as far as gear, it really depends on what kind of situation you're in. Now, and when I say situation, I mean what kind of lighting situation you're in. Now, here in the Phoenix, Arizona area, nearly all the facilities are outdoor, shot during very bright, sunny days. Um, so either you have a real advantage there when it comes to cameras and lenses as to what kind you use. So the two lenses I'm gonna be using today on my two camera bodies are one, this Nikkor 200 to 500 5.6. 5.6 really won't matter during the day. There'll be plenty of light to do it. You know, with most sports, uh, you can shoot their whole body, right? You can get the entire body in the frame. Swimming is a little different. Even though the distances to your subject aren't that long, remember you're only shooting these, this only this about this much area is outside the water. So you're gonna need to zoom in quite a bit to get some decent photos. So you're gonna need a decent telephoto lens to do this. This is a pretty good range with this 200 to 500, 5, 6. I'm pretty happy with that. The 200 tends to be maybe just a little too much if uh, you're right next to them as they're going to the inside lane. But beyond that, you really probably need something a little longer if you can afford it. If they're farther down the lane or they're in several lanes away from you and you're trying to capture them. So that's what I use mostly for the swimming events. Diving is a little different. For the diving events, you can get a little bit closer. Uh, I tend to be right underneath them or looking up at them. And remember, with diving, you can get their whole body into the, the frame. So in that case, we're looking at a, a 70 to 200. This is about perfect for uh, diving. So this is, would be my go-to when I do the guy diving. Now, they tend to run diving and swimming at the same time. So if you try to capture everything, you need to be swift on your feet or maybe have two different camera bodies or be able to prepare to move your, change your camera lenses very quickly so you can move from one to the other. All right, now let's talk about how the pools are set up, where to go, where not to go, stay out of trouble with the coaches and judges, but still get some great photos. All right, let's talk about how a pool is laid out and where you should go, where you should not go. So, you know, it depends on what kind of pool you get to, but let's say this is the length of the pool, the longs, and there are the lane markers in between. Now, on one end, you will have starting blocks. So let's put some starting blocks in here, okay? Then you will have, on one of the four corners, you'll have the diving area. So let's just say for the sake of argument, we'll put the diving area over here. There's a couple diving boards. There's a basic layout for a pool. So where should you go, where should you not go at a pool? So for the diving area, there was, there's gonna be judges. And let's they they're gonna be on this side over here or over here. But let's say for the sake of argument, we're gonna put them right here, okay? Judges, depends on you know the level of competition, who they bring in as judges. Usually it's coaches from both teams who are judging the diving portion of it, okay? You also have judges over here around the start line, and their purpose is to make sure that the start is correct, everybody gets off when they're supposed to, nobody goes early, that kind of thing. You'll also have a judge somewhere over here at the far end where they come down and do their turns and go back to make sure the turns are done correctly. He, the individual may be standing or sitting or something over here, or they might be over here to the side, perform the same function. Now, where can you not go? Well, obviously, you don't want to get in the way of the judges. Don't mess with these judges. Don't block their line of sight. Don't get in their way. Also, same thing over here. Don't want to get in front of those judges right there. I've also seen judges right here who are facing in this direction and you need to avoid getting in their line of sight over there. Now, with that said, where can you go to get some photos? Well, for freestyle, you know, they're coming down the line, the lanes, and they're doing the turn and they're going back. So basically, I hang out in this area and I move back and forth. You probably won't get a lot of competition for this particular area. Sometimes parents jump in, one or two, but it's usually not that bad. 
Where it gets a little crowded is on this end right here. A lot of times you'll have parents, you'll have other swimmers, and they'll all want to hang out here and cheer on uh, their, their teammates who are doing the swimming. Unfortunately, that's also the best place to get the photos, especially if they're with the breaststroke and the backstroke, anything basically other than the uh, freestyle, this is where you want to go on this side right here. So you're going to have some competition in this particular area. You're just going to have to deal with it. You know, you're just going to have to grab a good spot down here and it, take your pictures as such. So that's basically how I would do it. So freestyle over here, everything else over here. All right, so let's go out to the pool and I'll show you exactly how I should like to shoot these sporting events. Now, where you shoot from and what angle you're at kind of depends on what stroke you're looking at. For breaststroke and butterfly, I'm at the end of the pool and I'm down low, really low, as far as low as I could get. In fact, if I can, I'll lay on the deck itself. So yeah, you're gonna get wet doing this. Uh, in those, in breaststroke and butterfly, you wanna catch them as they're coming up, up out of the water. Now the backstroke's a little different. Again, I'm down on the end here uh, at the end of the pool, but you can't really get them coming toward you. You have to get them as they're actually going back away from you. Eyes are looking toward you. That's about the only thing you could do with backstroke, unless you can get above them somehow, which I don't have that opportunity at this location. Freestyle's a little different. In that case, you actually want to shoot down, to, down toward them, and I actually do that from the side of the pool, and you've got to kind of time it when they're coming up for air. Some swimmers only come up on one side, some will come up on both sides. If you've got, you got a swimmer that only does one side, you're going to have to wait until they're, they're facing you when they do that to take those photos. So for diving, it's going to be a little bit different. I'm either going to be down on the ground near the edge of the pool. Um, interestingly, I just asked the dive coaches if I could get up on the high board and shoot down toward them. They said yes, both coaches did. So I'm going to try that out today and see how that works out. All right, everybody, let's uh, take a look at some photos I got at this swimming event. Mm -hmm. 